Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we are going to talk about some AI shenanigans. We're going to be covering Marvell technology and we're going to talk about the reason that this stock has had a run up in price in the last week. Is it worth it? Are we looking at adding to our position of Marvell technology? We'll answer this in this episode. Also, we'll talk a little bit about the company Super Micro Computers, which we have not covered here at Chipstock Investor, but we know that many of our audience is anxiously awaiting what our thoughts are on this. And make sure you please stay tuned until the very end of the episode. We have a stock that we added to our portfolio that we will talk about. Okay, let's talk about Marvell Technology. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. First of all, Casey, I'd like to say I like your color coordination with your, your top and the color of your glasses today. Uh, <laughs> Marvell uh, reported earnings last week, but I think that had far less to do with the stock price appreciation, more than 40% jump in a week. Uh, not really Marvell's doing as much as it was probably NVIDIA's. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, our take on NVIDIA's absolutely epic quarterly earnings uh, is the last video we did. So take a look at that. So Marvell, yeah, I think we think this is like kind of an AI. This is where the AI hype is definitely real. The bubble is real, I think. Um, Casey, you want to just run through the uh, the high level numbers here real quick? Yes, revenue for the quarter, 1.32 billion in this first quarter. Net loss was 169 million. And a on an adjusted basis, Two hundred sixty-four million for net income. Free cash flow was one hundred and five million. And uh, Casey, you put together this chart, which we've been sharing the last few quarters. Uh, every time Marvell reports, just kind of gives a breakdown of their end markets, uh, and you can see from from this breakdown here, data center and consumer were the big drags on overall revenue. Uh, data within data center, they did say that their cloud segment, specifically components for the public cloud, are actually growing, but all of that growth more than offset by their enterprise customers. So that's basically like non-public cloud data center sales. Those were down, um, and it looks like it's going to remain kind of down year over year and flat quarter over quarter in Q2. Uh, some some growth in their enterprise segment. So that's like non-data center business. Um, mobile carriers, basically 5G is is what this is. Um, if, as 5G infrastructure expands, that's, that's what's propelling the growth here in the mobile carrier segment. And then of course, consumer markets, which are getting de-emphasized, but there is still some, some sizable exposure here at Marvell. That's just, you know, PC and smartphone business, uh, PC and smartphone sales are getting clobbered like everyone else. Automotive and industrial continues to do its thing. Uh, nice secular, secular growth trends going on there for the automotive market in particular. So all of this looks a little underwhelming to me. Looking at, I, I'll, I'll pull up both charts here from the last quarter and this quarter. It's, it's not great, really. So what what is going on here? What kind of chips does Marvell design? So Marvell is a fabulous chip designer. And a few years ago, they went on an acquisition spree. Um, they acquired um, a company called Infi, one called Anovium, and then another one called Tanzanite. Yes, I had to think about that for a second. Tanzanite in the last few years. And they kind of have built themselves into, into a company that can handle data center compute, a data center networking, and data center storage. So basically the three components 
of a data center, the computing, the movement of the data, and then the storage of the data. Uh, maybe just in very simple layperson terms here, I think this is an illustration we've used in the past, Casey, is we like to think of Marvell as like the freeway system of a data center. Um, so, so there's, of course, the computing. Um, they historically do something called a DPU, data processing unit. So that actually kind of processes the information and directs it to where it's supposed to go. Um, then you also have the networking. You could think of that as like, you know, the actual lanes and the speed limit. So as more data gets crammed into the cloud and crammed into data centers, you need to increase the number of lanes and increase the speed of, of, of those lanes uh, to compute more and more data. So that's the networking part. Um, and then the storage, maybe that's like the, uh, the on-ramps and on-ramps. Of, of the freeway system. So the data is being stored um, and then it gets pulled out of storage to be computed. And then on the back end of that, maybe it's been computed and it needs to go back into storage. Maybe that's like the off ramp. So that's maybe in, in simple terms as an illustration, uh, what Marvell does. It's basically an infrastructure chip business. Will that infrastructure translate to AI? Yes. Absolutely, it will, and that's that's basically what caused this this massive surge. So, we were listening to and reading the earnings conference call with CEO Matt Murphy from last Friday. We have one quote in particular picked out here. Casey, do you want to do you want to hit hit that quote real quick? AI in the past has been described as an app within the cloud. But he called this out and said, in the past, we considered AI to be one of many applications within cloud, but its importance and therefore the opportunity has increased dramatically. Generative AI is rapidly driving new applications and changing the investment priorities for our cloud customers. I'll, I'll point out, and maybe, maybe we can provide a link to this again here. Uh, a number of months ago, I got the chance to chat with NVIDIA's head of enterprise computing, Manavir Das, who helped basically architect Microsoft Azure, Microsoft's cloud computing, public cloud juggernaut, before it was a thing, like before anyone knew this was a thing. That's where he he kind of, you know, made made his name. He's now at NVIDIA, and he said something very similar to me at the time, actually, that you know, I asked about AI, this is pre-AI hype, just before pre-AI hype. And he basically said the same thing, like, well, AI is just one app, one application among many for the cloud. Uh, but because of chat GPT and how viral it became, and I think also just a lot of companies realizing the efficiency that generative AI can unlock, suddenly the trend has changed. A lot of companies want to adopt this new breed of AI because I think the potential is there to basically cut costs, specifically probably uh, labor costs, uh, knowledge workers, white collar workers, um, maybe make that, those workforces more efficient um, and help get some wage inflation under control there. So that's that's the new trend. And it looks like Marvell is also hopping on that bandwagon and expecting significant growth from AI in the coming years. Again, uh, Matt Murphy mentioned that they expect a compound annual growth rate of at least 100% from fiscal year 2023 to 2025. So what does that mean specifically? That was the market's cue to run the stock price up. Basically, I think the market was like, oh yeah, uh, NVIDIA's boom from AI is also going to translate over to Marvell. Uh, basically what that means is Marvell was saying that some of their AI specific products were gonna bring in $200 million last year, um, brought in $200 million. This year they expect it to be at least 400 million. And then next year, 
calendar year 2024 or fiscal year 2025 for Marvell, it's supposed to double again to at least 800 million. Um, so, you know, for a company that's you knocking on the door of 6 billion in annual revenue, uh, essentially a brand new product line worth $800 million in a quick two year stretch. Um, it's, it's, I think rightfully, um, a pretty big deal. I think we can call this significant uh, sales, new sales opportunity. Okay. So all of that sounds great, but the stock has jumped over 40% in the last, since last week, right? So is this stock a buy now? We've owned Marvell for a few years now. It's something that we've nibbled on, including late last year, Q4 2022, when when the stock price, when we thought the stock price was depressed. Uh, but three months ago, we put it on hold, right? We weren't adding, we weren't subtracting. And I think after this earnings update, it's still on hold because Q2 is going to be basically flat with Q1. Sequential growth isn't supposed to kick in until Q3 and Q4 this year. It's basically the second half of calendar year 2023. Um, and I think we'd still like to see Marvell deliver on on that expectation before, before we uh, get bullish again on this stock. So I think we're holding pat with our with our position at this time. Our plan is to hold this stock for the time being, but what would you say is a fair value for this stock? Do you have a price target for it for our viewers? Given the current information we have, we do think it is a bit overpriced. A uh, 40% jump for some financial guidance that is maybe a year down the road seems a bit extreme. But maybe rather than provide a fair price target, let's maybe just reverse engineer what the market's rough expectation is and then and then maybe we can decide whether or not that's reasonable um so the basic assumption i'm using um marvell we we really need to use free cash flow per share to value this company uh we've explained in the past because of those acquisitions they are they have elevated amortization and depreciation expense related to the past acquisitions. So we're going to use free cash flow per share over the last 12 months. That's a buck 19 dollar 19 per share. Uh, if we assume 30% free cash flow per share growth for the next two years, and then annualized free cash flow per share growth of 7% thereafter, use a discount rate of 10%. That gives us a current fair value of about 62 to 63 bucks per share, uh, which is roughly speaking, that's slightly over where Marvell trades for today as we record this, right? 65 bucks per share. That's the expectation. Uh, 30% free cash flow per share growth uh, in the next two years and then high single digit growth thereafter. I don't know, Casey, what do you think? Uh, a little overblown here on the expectations or is the market expecting too much? Yes, I think so. They haven't delivered yet. Uh, this is obviously, this is really good guidance, but at this point, just looking at the two chart, the two charts we have here tells me, let's just wait and see. I agree. Uh, I think there's a big difference between um, very, very rosy guidance, a very rosy outlook a year from now versus NVIDIA's guidance for the very next quarter. Uh, massive, you know, huge $4 billion quarter over quarter increase in NVIDIA sales. Marvell's still going to be flat quarter over quarter. Uh, so I think the market is pricing too much growth uh, far too soon. So Thus, thus you calling this AI shenanigans, 40% plus jump in a stock that has yet to deliver yet is uh, too far too fast. Okay, that's a wrap on Marvell technology then. We'll stay tuned to this stock and keep you posted on any changes in our decisions for this stock in our portfolio. 
Let's move on to super micro computers. And Nick, you're going to have to tell me about this company. I have not followed this one. So what exactly does this company provide? Yeah, super micro computer, ticker symbol SMCI, uh, not to be confused with SMIC, S-M-I-C, uh, Semiconductor Manufacturing International. That's on the Hong Kong exchange. That is mainland China's, one of mainland China's leading semiconductor manufacturers. Please don't confuse the two. We're talking about SMCI, super microcomputers, uh, which is up uh, a massive amount. Uh, I'm sure you're going to throw a chart up here, so I won't, I won't cite the number, but it's like 160%, I think, um, in the last year. So our colleague, Billy Duberstein, uh, I have written some roundtable articles where we like publish over the weekend and we like pick stocks that we like each week. Uh, this is one that he's been talking about for over a year. Uh, he bought it when it was very cheap. I'm not sure what he's doing with it now. Uh, I, I think you could probably find his commentary over on the Semiconductor Investing in More podcast. Uh, but basically what this company does is they manufacture modular servers for the cloud and for data centers. Uh, a modular server, uh, basically all a server is, is it's, it's, it's a computer. It is literally just a computer, uh, sort of like um, our PCs uh, or laptops or even our phones and our tablets. Um, the phones and tablets are like the uh, basic computing unit of mobile. Servers are the basic computing unit of the data center. A data center will have hundreds, thousands of servers crammed into it. Um, and those are kind of the things that you see like on the rack. Maybe you'll see someone working in a data center and they pull this rack out and there's all these computing components inside of it. That's a server. Uh, so super micro uh, manufacturers those. You mentioned to me that super micro computers it is known for modular servers. What exactly are those? Well, there's there's a number of different types of modular servers, but basically regardless of the type, basically what makes it modular is the fact that it is composed of smaller parts, uh, different computing parts pulled together from from different manufacturers. Uh, so, you know, you might have a CPU um, unit from Intel or AMD, and then GPUs from NVIDIA, and then maybe interconnects um, and and networking, networking devices from Marvell. Um, and you piece those together and you end up with, you know, this modular server. The benefit of that is it's customizable. It's highly customizable. Supermicro can customize it and then sell it based on their own composition, um, or it can be customized at the request of the end customer. So maybe it's um, a, a cloud giant like Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure uh, or Google Cloud, and they have a very specific workload that they need this modular server for. And so they, they request it from Supermicro and they build it with the parts they have on hand. Uh, the benefit of that is because it's modular, those different parts can be swapped out over time uh, as the as the end user, as the, the data center operator uh, deems necessary. You can see some pictures of that here from a recent NVIDIA press release. So that sounds pretty interesting. So is this tech new technology? Is this why it's driving the stock up? No, it's not. Uh, Servers are increasing. Uh, the demand for servers are increasing. That's because of the cloud. Uh, I, maybe maybe I'll back up. There there is a difference, including with Marvell. You'll notice when we were talking about Marvell in that chart, um, we have the data. They have the data center segment, but within data center, you have you have cloud data centers, and then you have enterprise data centers. Um, so basically. Yes, server demand is going up because you have kind of the more traditional servers that are used maybe on-premises 
uh, you know, in an office building, let's say, or maybe in a data center that a company uses privately for its own use. And then you have like this new breed of data centers that has, you know, cropped up in the last decade and a half for the public cloud. That would be like via AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud. And basically, uh, you're a remote user. Uh, you access that computer, that server via the internet, via an internet connection, but it's all hosted in a data center owned by the public cloud provider. Um, so that's kind of where the demand has, has come from in the last decade. And now, of course, we're seeing the results of generative AI. So it would appear that Supermicro probably um, benefited from a large influx of new orders from companies like OpenAI as they were building out their chat GPT service. Uh, they, they probably purchased a ton of modular servers from Supermicro and some of its peers. So that begs the question then, is this growth sub sustainable? As you mentioned, we'll, we'll show you the stock chart again here. It's up over... 300 and it's nearly 345% over the last year. So is that sustainable? Is that, is this stock and is this business going to continue at this rate of growth? I don't think so. Um, I don't think that growth rate is sustainable. This is ultimately a, a highly cyclical business um, because it, you know, it works with semiconductor components. So of course there's going to be some cyclicality there, but I think this one is going to be especially cyclical because not only are they not the chip designer or manufacturer, they're a contract manufacturer essentially, um, or, or an OEM, um, an original equipment manufacturer. It, maybe this is a good time to show the semiconductor industry flow chart here. Uh, they, they sit in this bottom right quadrant of the industry flow. There's a ton of competition here. Um, SMCI is by no means the only company that, that does this, although they do kind of tote the, the modular thing more so than, than many of their peers. Uh, but eventually this boom in demand is going to ease. And so sales will fall. And so the elevated profitability will also fall as well. Yeah, Nick, as, as we've looked at this business and started doing a little bit of deep diving here, we've really come to the conclusion that they don't have much of a competitive advantage. So what does this mean for this company? Well, let's actually just use a recent NVIDIA press release that came out of uh, Computex on, on Monday. And we'll actually, Casey, you can just share... Uh, the article here on the screen, um, NVIDIA announced this new modular architecture called NVIDIA MGX. Uh, basically, it's it's a, a specification that NVIDIA developed and is giving to Supermicro as well as a number of competitors. And they just rattle off a few here in the second para paragraph. AS RockRack, Asus, Gigabyte, Pegatron, QCT, and Supermicro. Um, so again, tons of competition here for Supermicro. Not only do they not design the chips, they don't really have any patents on the chips. They're also getting the modular architecture from NVIDIA. Um, so there's really very little competitive advantage here. And maybe just to, to prove the point, let's take a look at our login here from Main Street Data on Supermicro Computer. Very simple metrics here uh, on the income overview. Um, I've got revenue and operating income growth highlighted. And you can see this is a highly cyclical company. Revenue declines some years, other years it increases a very small amount. So highly cyclical business. Operating income is all over the board. And then suddenly the pandemic hits, especially 2022, which now we know was when Again, chat GPT was getting built and you see the sudden massive surge in revenue, sudden, even more dramatic increase in operating income before, before kind of coming down again here 
uh, in the most recent quarter, Q1 2023. Uh, so that's that's the growth. Now let's look at it as a percentage of revenue. I have just operating income highlighted now as a percentage of revenue. Uh, in normal times, this is a low to mid single digit operating profit margin business. At the peak last year, uh, they were just shy of 12% operating profit margin. In normal times, this company at best does low to mid single digit operating profit margins. That is paper thin, paper, paper, paper thin profit margins. That is an old telltale sign that the company has no competitive advantage. It operates in a highly, uh, highly distributed market, a highly fragmented market with lots of competitors. And there's no secret sauce here. Not really. That's what we're seeing. Um, right now. And so I guess maybe ultimately what that means is uh, no, we're, we're not buying. We're certainly not going to chase the stock now after the, uh, <laughs> the incredible surge in stock price in the last year, thus it getting added to your uh, AI shenanigans uh, episode title. Yes. I think it fits right into our theme here because a lot of these stocks are, are booming for, no really good reason. And that's why we're trying to call them out right now in our AI shenanigans. This is not to say that this is a bad stock or the stock that we just considered Marvell Technology. Both of these companies have their place. So we're not throwing anybody under the bus here. This is our just our personal position on these two companies at this time. Yeah, that's, that's right, Casey. And I, I guess... Maybe as to uh, Billy Duberstein, our our colleague that that owns this, I, I, a number of comments asked you know specifically for us to cover it as well, uh, because this is one that he picked over a year ago. But bear in mind, at the time, I, I became aware, aware of of the fact that he he liked it and and I think took a position in it. It was very very cheap. Um, so that's actually the time to buy. At the time he bought it, the the one year forward price to earnings was also in single digits. It was well, well under 10. And that's really, if you want to buy stocks like this, you have to buy them ultra cheap. At this point, on a trailing 12-month basis, Supermicro trades for 21 times earnings. And on a one year forward basis, it trades for 20 times earnings. So basically that gap has filled. It's those two metrics have converged over the last year or so. And so I think at this point, you know, will the stock continue to go up? It could. The momentum that the market is 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 fueling here could carry it higher. But there will come a point where this thing will collapse back back down to earth because it's no longer a cheap stock and it's highly cyclical. The business is highly cyclical. So uh, the market will eventually, you know, start taking profit off the table and it's going to return to historical cyclicality. So basically, I guess in, in summation here, you buy things like this, cycl highly cyclical stocks like this are fine, but you have to buy them cheap. And if you try to chase, um, just know that you're, you're, you're going to be owning a stock that you really need to babysit um, a lot going forward. This isn't a set it and forget it stock then. Okay, well, that's our take on super microcomputers. Why don't we move on now to the company that we will be adding to our portfolio this week? So depending on when you watch this video, uh, if you're watching it on the day of publish, it's gonna be two days from now, or if you're watching it uh, later on, we may have already added it, but. That company is Air Products and Chemicals, ticker symbol APD. Uh, as of this recording, it's at 274 bucks per share, trading for about 27 times trailing 12 month earnings. Um, Casey will drop a link to the video we just did a couple weeks ago on air products. This is one we've been watching for a long time and we're just not sure it's ever going to get much cheaper than this. So we're just going to initiate a starter position and we'll kind of add to this over time because that's just 
our our mo when we start a new position um we we enter enter it gradually over time it's just like getting into cold water right we're the wade in type of person versus the jump in head first well i'm the wade in type of person you jump into the cold water head first but i uh, you know funny that it kind of works that way with investing too um for for both of us at any rate air products and chemicals uh link to the last video we did on that um and it's other very large peer lindy uh embedded here in the video okay that's a wrap for today thank you for watching thank you for listening we have started to upload our full length videos to spotify podcasts as well if you prefer that medium check it out there we'll leave the link in the description for that as well as always check out main street data there is a link for that in the description for 10% off a premium subscription. You can use and analyze companies with their wonderful charts, visuals, and data there. Hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you again soon with Palo Alto Networks versus Fortinet.